try to do spatial data analysis in five minutes. So this is going to be a train wreck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to also thank the sponsors uh, for ho and Spatial Networks for hosting this. Uh, like I said, my name is Kevin Stofan. This is a neighbor of my neighbor. Uh, I'm interested in lag spatial relationships, and hopefully I can express that to you in five minutes. So there's my contact information. Uh, so lag spatial relationships. All right, I want to go into some background concepts. Uh, probably some things that a lot of you know about, um, some diagnostics that, that I use or, or suggest using to find these lag relationships, uh, a quick survey of some tools, and a few examples. So some background. Um, Topo's first law of geography, and have heard it a thousand times, everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related to distant things. I, I really think of elevation when I, when I think of that. You know, obviously something next to me is going to uh, have a similar height as where I'm standing. Uh, spatial autocorrelation. All right, this is purely negative spatial autocorrelation, the thing next to me is, is very much different than me. No spatial autocorrelation and then almost perfect spatial autocorrelation, positive spatial autocorrelation. Uh, we have a common statistic that we use. Uh, one of the statistics we use, Moran's eye, uh, it's an indication of covariance between observations and their neighbors. Um, there's a positive spatial autocorrelation of the percentage of people above 65 years old. Uh, a quick intro into uh, the study area I'm going to use here. This is Old Northeast. It's a, it's a neighborhood just north of here. Um, basically, rich people, old people, uh, less rich people, and shops. Um, <laughs> how, do we, uh, how do we express the structure of, uh, of these neighborhoods? Typically, it's in a, a weights matrix. Um, in, a, in this case, it's a rook's case, uh, the things to each side of me, and then the queen's case, which also includes a corner. Uh, basically, the weights matrix is uh, shows an adjacency as a value of 1 here inside of our study area. You can see that uh, all its neighbors have been coded with a value of 1. Uh, we, we typically digitize that as a, as a gal file, uh, my ID, the number of neighbors I have, and my neighbor's IDs. Uh, but I want to look at higher order uh, weight matrices. Um, so we can go, we can skip uh, over our immediately adjacent neighbors and uh, get, our, get the next neighbors. And then we can do that all the way out to six levels. Uh, and you can see the, the ones go out further in the map. Uh, one diagnostic that I use to look at how that's affecting uh, the neighbors, you can see that as the, the, weight, the weights uh, go up, uh, the histogram of how many neighbors I have kind of shifts to the right. Um, so this is something that I really want to get across here, spatial correlogram, great tool. Uh, it uh, plots Moran's I values at varying lags, and you can see that the values go down as you move away. Um, this is uh, population density on the right there. I like to compare it to a semivariogram in geostatistics. There's something called the range there. That's the distance at which spatial autocorrelation typically doesn't exist anymore in the, in the data. Um, and that point where our spatial correlogram crosses the zero point is something that I like to compare it to. Uh, so some tools I like to do this with, OpenGeoda. Uh, probably the, the quickest tool to get started. Uh, creating weights matrices, uh, doing some simple exploratory spatial data analysis. Uh, it's a great tool. It's free. Um, then R is the mother of all, you know, of all spatial data analysis. You can do anything in here. Uh, there's a little snippet of what I did to calculate the spatial programs. Uh, if you're not using R Studio, you should get it. Uh, they just recently integrated uh, uh, some Git integration in there. And then PySaw is a really good Python library um, made by the same people who do OpenGeoda. Um, some great modules in there. You can pretty much recreate everything that's in there. Um, some real good code in there. So I'm going to take you into a couple of examples now. Um, and what I'm looking for is the, this lag spatial relationship. So I want to see at lag positive autocorrelation again. So uh, percentage of, of adults over 65 in our study area, you can see that kind of happens at later lags. Um, this is the percent of vacant uh, structures in the study area. Um, not, as, not as obvious. Um, and we kind of lose confidence here at the end. And then finally, I have an example of the percentage of minorities reported. Uh, these are also 2010 census block data. Um, and you can see at that same lab, we kind of approach um, positive again. But uh, again, we, we lose confidence here. So just an example of a spatial correlogram. Not the most mind-blowing uh, results, but uh, some things I'd like to go, go through next year. Maybe some multivariate relationships, uh, a lag correlation matrix, another diagnostic tool I use, and uh, perhaps lag spatiotemporal um, relationships.
<laughs> 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 